Wakey, wakey, hello, good morning. And many thanks, Nick, for joining us here on Morning Prime. It is Friday. This is the 19th of July, 2024. I'm glad that you're joining us here on Morning Prime. We wind up the week just casting our eyes back on how it has been. Quite an eventful week it has been uh, with many alignment as far as political landscape is concerned. We shall be looking at that, the impending implosion of Azumio. Right now that we have different voices from the, from the same house uh, pointing to different directions as far as the government of national unity is concerned. And yesterday also, we saw the courts intervening and lifting the ban on uh, the protest in Nairobi and uh, the immediate regions that we had the acting IG saying that there will be no more protest because of what has been going with the goons who have infiltrated the peaceful protests as well. Well, there's still speculations on who is going to be on this particular list. That is the, the scramble for cabinet, and we shall be looking at that as well. But people are saying as far as we are going with what is in the public domain right now regarding the posts or the cabinet's slots as well, that they need a clean slate, a fresh start on that particular regard. Breaking away from uh, the familiar faces we've had, some with their clammy fingers in corruption as well. We shall be looking at that. Let's see how the weather will be today.
right, Radio Not here. I am with the dailies. We begin with the daily that is a standard. The Gen Z effect and scramble for cabinet. That is what we have on the front page of the standard today. Fighting the old order. Even as the president retreats to consider his new cabinet, secretary nominees, Kenyans have joined Gen Z protesters to demand a squeaky clean and meritorious government organs. But in a case of old habits die hard, the political class is already rooting for partisan interests. Which way, Ruto? That is the abiding question. You have a story on page four and five of the publication today. Also on the sidebar, TRT project, residents up in arms over compensation. You can follow the story on page two. Court suspends police ban on protest in CBD. Judge says Kenyans have the right to picket and police should not stop anyone from demonstrating in Nairobi's central business district. That story is on page seven of the publication today. We just uh, do something here that uh, is distracting us a bit. There we go. And uh, we have also on top there the teaser chief fight or chief fights it out with man over paternity rights, budget cuts, state house, DP hard heat, that is on page 8, and regional investments double, that is on page 21. Harikh, everyone is heading there, the ultimate challenge, and that story is tucked away on page 30 of the standard today. The Daily Nation to today, let me just head over there quickly, quick jumble up. That is what we have as a splash today. Riley's shadow in Ruto State House. That is what is on the front page of the Daily Nation today. Looking at the flagger, opposition chief working with president despite protest for Mazumio allies. And you can follow this story on page four and five of the publication today. Big gamble. The ODM chief Ralo Odinga has emerged as one of the president's, uh, President William Ruto's closest confidants. In the wake of the ongoing anti-government protest, is not in doubt. The two are say been meeting regularly with their discussions centered on pacifying the country and the formation of a broad-based government. That story is on page 4 and 5 of the publication today. Now the autopsy is revealing that Nakuru student fell out of a moving car. Elin Cherotich, the 22-year-old Rift Valley Institute of Science and Technology student who was found dead in Nakuru on Sunday after a night out with friends died of a severe head injury. A post-mortem report has revealed and you have the full story on page three of the publication today. Who will become the next police boss? That is their abiding question here. And the faces are splashed here. Acting Inspector General of Police, Douglas Kanja, or will it be Major General Af Afaksad Kyugu, Kenya Military Academy Commandant, or Nyale Munge, that is Nyale Munga, Kenya Police College Commandant, that is on page eight of the publication today. On top here, Ministry unveils 161 member team to Paris Olympics. That is on page 39. And also you can read about the Kenya Police retake port from Haiti gangs. Gangsters defeated after gunfight. You have a story on page 2 of the publication this morning. No loans for 153 Gen Z's. Education House team reveals that cash allocated to help universities fund scholarship drastically cut in budget and uh, a move that could see parents pay college fees or students get locked out of lecture halls. That story is on page 5 of the publication today. And also still on the front page of the People Daily as Gashagwa's wife six. that is how you should read, no loans for 153k Gen Z's as Gashagwa's wife six 2.7 billion shillings budget that story continues inside the publication this morning rectangular on the cross as ours resumes after rage you can follow that story on page six of the publication this morning as well this is what, what we have on top majority of kenyans back demos this is what the study is saying here and you can read all about it on page seven of the publication today the star azimio death big wigs divorce over ruto deal Raela's ODM to join Ruto's unity government, but Kalonzo and Karua flatly reject plan. This story continues on page 4 and 5 of the publication today. Majority of Kenyans support Gen Z movement, one state to cut spending, and that story is on page 5. And of course, the regions are given here how they reacted to this particular survey. 
To what extent do you support the Gen Z movement that is seeking various reforms for Kenya? Uh, that was a question. And there's, of course, the total is 81%. You can see how it's been broken down to different regions as well. And uh, the items that have been listed here that they reacted to. That is a star. Slain Quarry Woman was social medical addict, a uh, media addict, I should say. Slain Quarry Woman was social media addict. This is what the brother is saying. 14 year old girl dies by suicide in Naivasha, Shoka to varsity students after state slashes funds. And that is a story to follow inside the publication today. Pressure Kote Kote Kwaruto is what we have on the front page of Taifa Leo. Raisa Kabiliwa na Changa Moto, Ukiwemo Uwasi. Mbazo zime tikisa utawala wake wa nchi kwa miaka miwili. Rais wile muto anakabiliwa na changa moto tele kuhusu mwelekeo ambao taifa itachukua kutokana na matukio ya kisiasa eneo endelea nchini. Wasi wa naibu wake vijana wa jenzi kukaa ngumu shinikizo za kuteua wa waziri mwapia pingamizi kwa serikali ya mungano na uchumi kusambaratika ni miongoni mwa yanayo mfanya rais kujikuna kichwa we have that story on page 2 of the publication today wabunge wa ODM walionya raili walionya raila should say kuhusu dili that story is on page 3 Argentina Hispania fiti katika FIFA and you can follow the story on page 20 of the publication this morning let's cross over to Tanzania where TRA boss he says my plan to tackle taxpayers' complaints, he's giving it out. TRA Commissioner General Yusuf Wenda assures members of the business community that he will ponder challenges they are grappling with and jointly work, work out solutions. You can follow the story on page two of the publication this morning. Tanzania appointed head of East Africa Business Council. That is on page eight as well. Why cargo volumes have doubled in nine months at Tunduma? Nakonde is another story on page 3. Tanzania gears up for blockchain tech option as well in today's publication. Let's see what is happening in Uganda. Salib loses waxy wings in Battle of Titans. Day of Reckoning, an imposing figure and strong-headed worker. Miss Geraldine Salis rise to the top of corporate governance and public service came unexpectedly about 14 years ago. Having been catapulted to the top, she grew wings and stamped authority in her space. But in so doing, she flew too close to the sun, and many have melted the wax around her wings. Four, five, and six of the Daily Monitor is her story. Born in 1975, uh, Sally has been high-flying corporate leader, having worked as the deputy managing director of Workers Fund, and now a ministry accounting officer. That story is all tucked away in today's Daily Monitor. If you're waking up in Uganda, wonder. Rwanda's banking industry grew fivefold in 10 years. This is according to a new report. The banking industry has been, or has seen its net profit soar, rising from 50 billion shilling Rwanda francs in 2014 to nearly 50 billion Rwanda francs. Did I say mixed shillings and Rwanda francs? 50 billion Rwanda francs in 2014 to nearly 350 billion Rwanda francs in 2023. Kagame, RPF, Inkontanyi maintain major lead in polls and that is the story that you want to follow in today's publication as well of the New Times. The East Africa this week, this has been the splash task for Rwandan leader in New Town from building an economy characterized by high taxes and debt to dealing with Congo Rao. The president's job is cut out for him. And you can follow the story on page 4 and 5 of the publication. What at the extra oil uh, in Uganda or the extra Ugandan oil? Uh, you can follow that story inside the publication. Who ordered the extra Uganda oil? Ruto's dilemma in new cabinet jobs is what now is a catnip issue also around East Africa. Everyone is keeping their eyes peeled to see how he's going to set up his new cabinet. Party charts reform courses on China Daily. The Economist how to raise one's IQ and the week a monumental victory for Stammer. And of course, abandoned ship, that's a probing question. We have uh, President Joe Biden, who is being shoehorned to drop his candidature because of the dismal performance recently. And also right now, he has been stricken again by COVID-19. That is on the week. Democrats waver over whether to 
bail on Biden. And that is on page 4, 6, 12 and 15 and 17 of the publication today. Those are the dailies. Make sure you grab a copy of whatever daily that really floats your boat for those riveting stories that we do have this morning. Right time to unveil our guests uh, here this morning. And uh, we're joined by Dr. Isaac Kaloa Green, who is the Jita party leader and also an ecopreneur. We're also joined by Kipruto Arab Kiro, a governors and policy analyst, Dr. Barak Muluka, who is a strategic communications advisor, and also Professor Jonah Kindiki, who is a governors and policy analyst. Time just to hear their voices this morning. It's a Friday, and how their week has been. We begin with uh, Dr. Kulo, who's been missing in action. And uh, everyone who has been missing in action, we've been assuming that uh, they're part of the Sky Team. Maybe they've been globe trotting. That's what we've been telling everyone who has been missing in action. Good to see you. Thank you very Good to have you back. Yes. Thank you very much. Our country needs peace. Kenyans are grappling with high cost of living. And it's a very painful thing. We pray that God will come through for us mm -hmm. and heal our country because we really need that. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Nice to see you. Thank you, thank you, you thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. yeah. Let's hear from uh, Kipruto Rabkirwa. Good morning. Yeah. Good morning, Dibal. It's also my pleasure to be here. And may, let me also welcome Dr. Green, because he's been missing in action. Mm -hmm. Some of the fans of this particular program have been asking me, where is the moderator? <laughs> 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 because they believe Dr. Green is able to come to the middle when the, some of us are on extreme sides of the equation. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you. Fantastic. Uh, let's hear from Dr. Barak Muluka. I know that uh, Dr. Green is not uh, usurping the role of the, the umpire. <laughs> the umpire. Oh, because there's only one moderator. Uh, but I'm happy to see Dr. Green is Thank looking you. very green. Thank you. Um, in the literal sense, <laughs> not in the figurative uh, yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah. But. Uh, uh, the Bala in there, they are, that name is Sally. 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 From Uganda. Yes. Uh, uh, Sally. In, in phonetics, we call it the germinate consonant sound. The germinate consonant sound. In the word initial position. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it says Sally. <laughs> Sally. 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 Yeah, as opposed to so Sabasaja. <coughs> Sabasaja. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. Sally. So you call it the germinate what? Consonant sound. The germinate consonant sound. In the word sound. initial position. All right. That as is opposed the to the single tone. Mm -hmm. Sabasaja. Sabasaja. <laughs> <laughs> There's no stopping in, uh, uh, in line. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah That's phonetics. Things. Phonetics. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, remember here also, let me not mention. <laughs> Let's hear from <laughs> Professor Jonah Kidiki. Good morning. Yeah. Good morning, Dubai. Yes. And, uh, Good morning, viewers. Um, I'm happy to see you and also my colleagues, especially Dr. Green. I join my colleagues by welcoming you back. Thank you. You're so much welcome and part of us. Uh, the bar, um, it's a good morning, but we, our country needs a lot of prayers because there are so many things that are, need to be tied up. And thank you for my colleague introducing uh, English grammar this morning about phonetics. It's, it's not, I hope, it's is it not English, English grammar this, or this English literature? Yeah. Or literature? <laughs> this is Luganda. Luganda. Yeah. But they, it has they, even they have this rare consonant sound yeah. that is re duplicated yeah. in certain uh, environments, so to speak, phonetically. But let's not go Those are phonetics. Phonetics. <laughs> <laughs> Politics. As opposed to politics. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, Diba. Thank you, thank now you. Now that the good professor has said that Kenya needs prayer, I suggest that we pray. We do the actual pray. Yes. You know, we can pray and Heavenly I Father, we thank you because of the opportunity that you have given us in this place. We pray that your wisdom will abound and that God of heaven, peace will be found in this nation. 
the high cost of living and the trouble that Kenyans are going through will be mitigated by you, that you'll protect our families, you'll protect the leadership of this country. We need you at a time like this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I've said amen, but I'll also add that God tells us in the book of Isaiah in chapter 1, verses 10 to 16, mm -hmm. that their prayers he will refuse to listen to. If we Kenyans don't do the right things, especially the people in leadership. You know, sometimes we go before God, and it's good always to go before God and prostrate <coughs> ourselves before God. And God wonders, what more do these people want? What haven't I done mm. for oh. them? Because we just keep on getting it wrong, mm -hmm. and sometimes quite deliberately so, mm. governed by greedy appetites. Mm. And so we need, uh, certainly I agree, to pray. We need prayers, but we also need to hold some internal dialogue with ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, we've been also satiating this country with prayers recently. Uh, are they really, sometimes, uh, are they really also uh, sort of making the face of God really turn away from us because we're lifting our hands that... Uh, we, we are not coming clean. You know, there's some prayers that says, as you say. And, that, and, uh, and God says, it, it, the more it, it, you lift up the, your hands, the more, the more, I, I, turn my face the more away. I turn my face away from you. Yeah, until you go <laughs> and repent of some of the things and that we do. He says, yeah. your hands have blood. Your hands are soiled. You yeah. oppress the poor. The poor. Mm -hmm. Right, Zion, that chapter is, one. That is why Numbers 14, 44, <laughs> reminds us when the Israelites were headed for a fight and Moses warned, because you have turned away from me, you will die by the sword. And they feared that process and they went ahead and they were actually killed. The and same I, God that we pray for, yes. and to, <coughs> is able, if we turn away from him, we can actually lose ourselves because it is him, uh, because he's not walking with us. And uh, it is upon us to realize and appreciate that we need to mend our ways with God so that we do not do just what seems to be uh, facial and not dealing and connecting at the uh, the best point. So you are right. And we I need agree to, with yes. uh, you, Dr. Green, entirely. Because turning towards God is not drama. Mm -hmm. It's not True. acting. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's not uh, affecting something like uh, what we do in this country. Mm. We say we are having uh, national prayers. Mm -hmm. But it's uh, just a, a dramatic exercise. The internal penitence is absent. And that's why God has told us in the self-same uh, scripture that uh, I cite that uh, I don't want your sacrifices. Mm -hmm. Take them away. They, I find them offensive. And I think that uh, the people who lead prayers, and I'm told that we have a, a prayerful state house, must reflect about some of these things. When they send uh, the people into their streets who, who, who donning balaclavas, clearly meaning that these are people who are known by name and by face and who we should not know or recognize at that moment that they are executing that uh, criminal drama in the streets. They must also balance that on the weighing scales of prayer. Mm -hmm. And prayer is very important. So let us continue praying, but let us also be penitent. Indeed, indeed. So um, just to remind us as well that uh, what uh, we normally frequently hear being quoted from the book of the seven, Second Chronicles 7, 14, that if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn away from their wicked ways, turn away from their wicked ways, that is the operative word there, mm -hmm. then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. If we turn away from the idolatry, 
the, the witchcraft, the corruption, <laughs> the brutality, the oppression of the poor that has been happening in this country, uh, the injustice, and the list can be frustratingly long. Then he promises he will hear us. Even as we seek uh, his face right now for a country, these are the things that we, ha we are as a country on a, that inflection point that it's a watershed moment for us. Even as we go forward, we should ask ourselves what forces that are instigating what is going on right now. Uh, as you say, we can introspectively just look inside and uh, reach out to the deep recesses of our hearts and ask that uh, we be cleansed from inside. Because I, I believe also what we normally see, there is a great impact of what we don't really see at the end of the day. So transformation just doesn't happen on the political structures of the day, but it happens also from our mindset, our posture inside. How is it at the end of the day? Right. So we have a lot really covered this morning, and uh, just to talk about the latest developments as well, I think maybe will be a propos for me to just set the tone by just uh, getting some stories on the road here, especially on the, the media attack, where in the face of growing attacks on the, the media during the recent protests, the Kenya Editors Guild says a planned seven-day strike will continue and that media practitioners will resort to the streets if the situation is not arrested. As KTN's news editor Francis Ontoma now reports, several journalists have paid a heavy price in the, in the line of duty, while state organs remain mealy-mouthed on the issue. undergoing treatment at Nakuru PGH Annex Hospital and has allowed us to speak to her from a hospital bed. I left my house thinking that I'm going to cover protests and go back home. Little did I know that I will end up in a hospital with stitches on my thigh. I don't know how long it's going to take me to recover. I might try my level best and I don't know what kind of damage those cars are going to do to me. I know the administration and the county commander of this county knows who he had given that bullet. On Wednesday, the abduction of veteran journalist Masharia Gaido sent shockwaves through the media fraternity. The abduction was swift and rough. The detectives later claimed it was a case of mistaken identity. It is extremely traumatizing because when you are abducted by unknown people, who do not identify themselves. When I asked them to identify themselves or who they are, their response was that they have a Subaru. Therefore, I should know they are policemen and that they have guns. Therefore, they, I should know they are policemen. It's hard to dissociate his work from this intimidation. Gaido has been a top critic of the government of the day through his cutting edge articles on the local dailies. <laughs> As attacks on the media grow, some analysts like George Nyabuga, a professor of media studies at the Aga Khan University in Nairobi, and a former editor, see a media space that keeps shrinking. I think the space is shrinking, uh, given what it is that we are uh, seeing. There's a, a lot of pressure on media, there's a lot of pressure on uh, journalists perhaps to go slow uh, on um, uh, you know, critical reporting of what is currently uh, going on. Uh, I think the uh, political leadership is keen on um, um, uh, uh, ensuring that uh, whatever pictures, whatever stories that are emerging from these protests uh, are not um, widely uh, consumed by, uh, you know, uh, people around the uh, world. The recent protests have seen several journalists injured. Standard Group's videographer Justus Masheria was assaulted when an officer claimed he was filming him. He was dragged into a police car and then dropped dangerously. Inasikitisha sana kwamba kama wana habari hatuna amani tena. Taifa linatutegemea sisi kupata habari, kufahamishwa na tuna haki ya access to information. Other journalists who have suffered injuries include CNN videographer Fabian Muhire who was sprayed with tear gas and AFP's Colin Solunga 
was injured on his arm. The media shouldn't shy away from covering issues of public interest, uh, being critical of government, being critical of individuals that they think uh, have let uh, people down and have let society uh, down. Journalists covering an opposition briefing were yesterday attacked and bundled out of the meeting by a group of goons. <laughs> Threats to Occupy Citizen TV are the latest intimidation tactics, putting Kenyan journalists at risk as they strive to keep the nation informed during the unrest. In a statement, the Kenya Editors Guild has demanded that the government offers protection of the media houses and specifically for the media house being targeted. Reporters Without Borders ranks Kenya at position 102 out of 180 in the World Press Freedom Index report. Francis Ontomoa, KTN News, Nairobi. Now, the High Court has suspended Acting Inspector General of Police Douglas Kanja's directive on uh, banning protest within Nairobi's Central Business District and its environs over safety concerns. Justice Vatati Momuye issued the order following a case filed by Katiba Institute challenging Kanja's directive on Wednesday. The court's order came on a day the planned youth-led assembly at Uhuru Park that will have culminated in a march to status failed to take place. This after anti-riot police sealed off the venue, as Gloria Milemo reports. A heavy presence of anti-riot police was witnessed within the Nairobi Central Business District Thursday ahead of the planned march to State House in what appears to be a relentless push by the youth-led protesters demanding the resignation of President William Ruto. By midday when street marches gained momentum, Uhuru Park that was to be the main assembly point for at least 5 million Generation Z protesters, according to an online poster calling for people to gather on Thursday, remained deserted. Though, guarded heavily by anti-riot police who had sealed its main entrance. It is not yet clear whether the protesters heeded the demonstrations ban by police late Wednesday that stated that no demonstrations would be permitted in Nairobi Central Business District and its surroundings until further notice to ensure public safety or whether the unpleasantly chilly Nairobi weather was not favorable for demonstrations or whether they saw it wise to retreat, re-strategize and unleash another surprise on the security agencies. <laughs> it may however come as a reprieve for planners of the Gen Z protests after the High Court suspended the Wednesday directive banning protests within Nairobi by the Acting Inspector General of Police, Douglas Kanja. Justice Bahati Momuye directed that the AG Inspector General or any other person serving within the National Police Service or acting in support of the National Police Service should not affect the police order issued Wednesday. Meanwhile, a spot check by KTN News showed calmness had returned as the capital slowly rode back to life Thursday despite the planned demonstrations. More protests are planned under the Occupy Uhuru Park hashtag on Tuesday next week. Gloria Milimu, KTN News. Now, meanwhile, the Kenya Revenue Authority says Kenya has lost in excess of 6 billion shillings following the ongoing anti-government protest by Gen Z's. According to government spokesman Isaac Maura, youth should stop the weekly protest, saying it will cost the country more. Youth under the umbrella of Gen Z's have been holding protests on Tuesdays and Thursdays over the last one month. All right, we'll run you about that story much, much later. Let's see what is happening with the cabinet intrigues right now, where KTN News can authoritatively report that Azimio coalition has been given seven cabinet slots that are to be shared by the sister parties. KTN has learned that the sharing formula is what has led to a split within the coalition, as ODM has reportedly demanded to have four out of the seven, while the rest uh, to be shared between Wiper, Jubilee, Na Kenya, DAP, Kenya, and any other party in the coalition. However, President William Ruto is facing an acid test as youth and church have continued to mount pressure that he picks only professionals and not political cronies. KTN 
OKTL's senior political affairs reporter Daniel Karuki has more on this. The political class between the government and the opposition are jostling for the cabinet positions and this has left President William Ruto scratching his head on possible names for replacements in the cabinet. Whereas his deputy, Rigadiga Shagwa, has urged him to be careful with whom he appoints. God has given him a chance to come up with a good team of patriotic Kenyans who are not corrupt, who are not arrogant, who are not vomiting on Kenyans, who are serious on service delivery. It is turning out to be his cabinet may after all resemble a grand coalition government. KTN News has learned that the opposition Azimio coalition has been given seven slots of the next cabinet. These slots are to be shared by the sister parties, but ODM is scrambling for most of the positions, at least four positions. During uh, the demonstrations, this is said to be at the center of the rangos that saw an Azimio parliamentary meeting end abruptly and rowdy youth disrupt Waipa leader Kalonzo Musioka news conference. <laughs> that was to dismiss any plans to join Kenya Kwanzaa regime by Azimio's side. <laughs> Sources within the opposition have revealed that while the ODM has noted for the broad-based government proposal by the president in a bid to steer the country out of the current crisis caused by protest organized by Gen Z. Some Azimio constituent parties have rejected the proposal, terming it as Ruto's plan to sanitize himself, the intrigues tearing away the Azimio coalition. According to the source, President Ruto does not want to repeat his predecessor Uhuru Kenyatta's misdeeds where he only incorporated Raila Odinga into his administration and is keen in ensuring the entire opposition is incorporated in the government of the national unity. NAC Kenya leader Martha Karua, who has given the Azimio activities a white bath, has also threatened that Azimio will break away should one of its members and train Ruto's overtures to join government. The demands currently on the table are the demands of the Gen Z, and we the political class cannot claim to speak on their behalf. While the political class continue to plot and strategize for political appointments into the cabinet, a move a political strategist has associated with the delays of naming of the cabinet, the church and the Gen Z are opposed to awarding of political cronies and want Ruto to go only for professionals. These are coalition of persons with a disability urged President Ruto to appoint at least two persons with disabilities in the new cabinet as per the constitution, sentiments echoed by civil societies. We humbly request you this time as you uh, form another cabinet, consider appointing at least two uh, cabinet secretaries for persons with disability. Thank you. Dialogue is the cornerstone for resolving our differences. We urge all stakeholders to engage in constructive dialogue to foster understanding and chart a path forward that respect the rights and dignity of every citizen. Political commentators opine that although it was not a political question, President Ruto could be looking into dragging his political rivals into the mess being witnessed so that if they were to be crucified in 2027, then Odinga and his team would not be preferred as he would also try to inherit Odinga's constituency. Daniel Karioki, KTN News, Nairobi. Can President William Ruto reappoint some of the 21 cabinet secretaries that he dismissed on Thursday? Last week, that's the abiding question. This is a question that has divided opinion among legal minds, with uh, some lawyers now saying that the president is barred by the constitution from reappointing them, while another, another section of lawyers is insisting that the head of state can still reappoint some of the cabinet secretaries he sent packing if he so wishes. KTN's political affairs reporter, David Mudok has more. Amid reports that President William Bruto is considering bringing at least three former cabinet secretaries, among them former defense CS Aidan Duale and former interior CS Professor Kithure Kendiki, 
back to his cabinet. The president's plan could become a tall order if an ongoing debate by some senior lawyers on social media is anything to go by. One section is convinced that President Ruto is barred by the Constitution of Kenya from reappointing any of the cabinet secretaries he dismissed a week ago, while another section is arguing that dismissed cabinet secretaries can still be reappointed. Among those who believe the president cannot reappoint fired cabinet secretaries are former presidents of the Law Society of Kenya, Nelson Harvey and Ahmed Nasir, Abdullahi Harvey, while reacting to a Gazette notice published last week, posted on his ex-account, and I quote, the dismissal from office of the cabinet secretaries means that they are ineligible to hold any public office forever, appointive or elective. Harvey concludes by saying the cabinet secretaries are in the same category as impeached governors or judges found unsuitable to serve. That is the law. End of quote. Lawyer Ahmed Nasir Abdullahi also threw his weight behind Harvey's argument by saying, and I quote, Harvey states the law correctly. President Ruto can't reappoint any member of the cabinet because their dismissal under the constitution implied a grave omission or commission. Ahmed Nasir Abdullahi concludes by saying reappointing any dismissed CS will engulf President Ruto in a fresh political crisis and unparalleled constitutional imbroglio. Other lawyers, however, have different views. Lawyer Korir Singoi, who is also the Foreign Affairs Principal Secretary, argues that, and I quote, none of the cabinet secretaries who are dismissed have been impugned so as to render them permanently infirm to serve. That is not to say the political cost of any reappointment is insignificant, a calculus I am certain the president is conscious of. End of quote. Singoye's interpretation was jokingly faulted by lawyer Miguna Miguna, who commented, Still sleeping in class, Singoye? Dismissed public service CS Moses Korea while siding with foreign affairs PS Korel Singhoe criticized both Harvey and Ahmed Nasir by saying, and I quote, as lawyers of disrepute, if your scholarly arguments are to hold water, the affected persons then have to be taken through a disciplinary process or a court martial. This McCarthyism by you Pharisees must stop, end of quote. Another question that has also stirred debate is whether President William Ruto had by also dismissing Attorney General Justin Muturi. Seven Kenyans have since moved to court to challenge Muturi's dismissal, which they say did not follow Section 12 of the Attorney General's Act. The section states that the president may remove the AG or the Solicitor General from the office where there is gross misconduct physical or mental incapacity to perform the functions of that office, incompetence, bankruptcy, and serious violation of the Constitution. With the High Court yet to rule on the case, it is very much likely that the reappointment of any dismissed cabinet secretary will also head to court, considering Gen Z demonstrators who in the first place piled pressure on the president to dismiss his cabinet, have opposed the recycling of former cabinet secretaries and called for a leaner and competent cabinet consisting of only fresh faces. David Muthoka, KTN News, Nairobi. All right, with the intrigues of what is happening with the cabinet as well, we know that the prime cabinet secretary is having, or is having, I should say, his foot everywhere right now. All ministries is the one who is overseeing. Only the wearer knows where the shoe pinches. This is what Steno has done today inside the People Daily. And in the midst of every crisis lies great opportunity. That is what Albert Einstein once said. And you can see a telling editor cartoon there of opportunities that is awaiting Azimio or for that matter, ODM, with the cabinet slots that we've been given 
uh, to understand that it stands at seven right now, according to the latest reports that we've been given by our reporters here. And you can see how it has been in the house of Azimio, right? Chairs being thrown every which way uh, and the invasion of the infamous men in black. And let's talk, William. This is the current state of play as far as Azimio is concerned. It is on the pinnacle right now, as you can see it there. And who is aboard that particular car there? is Rilo Dinga and President William Ruto. And now a section of Azimio is going back to the drawing board. Game plan, not boarding, so they say. And uh, another section, let's talk, William. Uh, them, they're boarding with that idea. And role reversal. Who is a watermelon now? It seems you can see Raila is patched there on the watermelon. Yeah, no to dialogue, dialogue. Here you see every finger uh, is pointing every which way as far as his direction is concerned. Is he rudderless? Right, that's also another probing question that everyone is asking. And Kalon, Kalonzo Musioka is not flinching back, he's not throwing back as far as his stand is concerned. And this could be now the breakaway and the implosion. And the cookie crumbling down of Azimio. We take a short break. When we circle back, of course, we shall be looking at this. And some names here also have been listed in some of the lists that we've been seeing going and uh, doing so in doing rounds in the social media. One of us will tell us if this is true. Has he been called to be the Minister of Agriculture? Right? Uh, he's somewhere in this particular studio this morning. We take a short break.